Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast um, Let's Play with Underscore. Uh, once again we are on the Minecraft mod pack. Um, if you watch my multiplayer series, um, you saw me uh, playing around with something called the Wrath Igniter and for the purpose of making dark iron. And um, I didn't really go into the detail on how that is done on the multiplayer. Uh, so I figured I would go ahead and do that in my single player series. And um, the first thing that we need in order to get that stuff going is this craft packet stamper. Um, there's another of different like craft um, devices that come up when you do a search, but the one that you want, oh, uh, the maker and the stamper, but the one that you need is the stamper, um, which is fairly simple to make. It's just a couple of iron ingots and um, a crafting table which okay I have a crafting table here and a piston and just some cobblestone um, which I don't have cobblestone handy except in my diggers bag here let's just take a bunch out um, and that'll give you the craft packet stamper now this does not need to be powered by anything um, but what we need to provide for it is a special craft packet um, and the craft packet is actually ironically made not in the craft packet maker but in a uh, regular table like this a regular crafting table and uh, in order to get this going we do need um, five, four, four TNT um, so you need to have quite a bit of gunpowder powder stockpiled. One, two, three, four. But other than that, it's not very resource intensive. And the other thing that you need to have is um, some obsidian. Um, so you do need to have your diamond pick or a turtle or something um, to get this going. And here we go with the obsidian. And I have placed them in the wrong places, apparently. Oh, you need a diamond block. I forgot. Um, it's not just a diamond. That would be far too cheap. Um, so let me see if I actually have enough diamond to make a diamond block. I do. So we can go ahead and make the diamond block. Oop, oop, oop. Nope. That's not where I wanted to be. Uh, these bits of the Traveler make it a little tricky to get through doorways and stuff sometimes. Uh, there was actually three tiers of boots. Oh man, did I just uncraft that? That's an interesting feature. Um, there were three tiers of boots in Thumbcraft 2, and the boots of the Traveler were actually the lowest tier of boots. Um, so, if you imagine the amount of difficulty I have going through doors, um, they do allow you to to jump a little higher, I believe. Um, there were two tiers of boots above this um, that you could upgrade to that would allow you to jump even higher and move even faster. And if you got the highest tier of boots, they were basically unwearable if you if you wanted to navigate like around a house or something like this um, because it was just too fast. There we go. Craft packet of uh, obsidian, TNT obsidian. Oh, that's just basically telling you what the what the layout is in there. And then if you stick this widget in here, you get 18 diamond shards out of it. And then from there, you can make the wrath igniter, which is basically just another brick. Hopefully, I still have some another brick around somewhere. Um, which is just another brick and the diamond shard. Oh, uh, where's my blocks? Just up, oh, plenty of another brick. So that guy and that guy, right? Yes, there we go. Wrath igniter. Um, so one of the things I talked about doing with this is making the wrath lamp. Uh, oh shoot, we need to make the dark iron first. 
Um, so let's grab a bunch of iron and we'll go off and make um, make the dark iron ingots like we did before. Whoa, little lag, little lag. Um, so let's just take a stack of this. Uh, I'm not sure how much we're going to need. Um, we can always use it later on, so I'm just going to make a bunch of it. So we'll just make 14 for now. Um, do I have any? I'd like to have iron on me at all times, so I'm just going to grab some more. And uh, let me get rid of this sand so that I have a clear inventory. So the issue with uh, the Wrath Igniter is that it has a 40 block radius area of effect of fire if you don't hit your target correctly. Um, so you almost need to find somewhere where you're not going to damage anything. Uh, which is why I went to the desert on the multiplayer world. Um, and it was it was something we discovered by accident playing around with the Wrath Igniter. Um, the spawn on the uh, the earlier multiplayer server before the map was reset, uh, we ended up in a desert, and um, some folks were playing around with the Wrath Igniter and lit the desert on fire, and that's how we discovered that little glass effect. So it's going to have some blaze powder around, especially if you have as many slime balls as I do. Now this little widget, look at this, saltpeter. This is saltpeter ore. This is the only other way um, to make fertilizer in the Minecraft pack. And I could not for the life of me find that saltpeter ore <laughs> anywhere when I was doing those farm blocks. So it's nice that uh, now that I don't really need it, that I found uh, like 18 stacks of appetite that uh, I just stumble across it right over here. Oh, here's more. It's supposed to be at the bottom of um, of the the hills of sand, but I mean I'm just finding it right here. So, and what is that? Is that more? That looks like flint. It is flint. That's weird. You get flint from saltpeter ore. Anyway, uh, it's dark right now, so that's conducive to what we're doing. I'm not sure if that apiary is going to catch on fire or not. So basically we just need to lay out these blocks in a way so that they're all kind of exposed to um, the flame effect from the Wrath Igniter. I thought I had more than that. Is that 14 already? Um, so any kind of layout, I believe, will do. And then you have to have a place that you can go that you won't catch on fire. Um, so in the other map, all I did was uh, create a pile of sand and then stand on top of it. Um, which is only really necessary if you miss for some reason. Um, but I don't trust myself enough to not do it, so. So then you just equip this, right click. And it looks like we did okay with it. I'm just going to stand right here to see if it will spread beyond those blocks. Some people build like an obsidian shell um, to do this kind of stuff in, but I didn't have enough obsidian to really make that practical, so... And once the little red circle particle effect goes away, these are just residual fires, which I just walked in. Um, so you can just put these out and then you just mine these 
and each one of these dark iron blocks will give you uh, four dark iron, so it's not like you get the full nine uh, in return. But yeah, that's basically how you make the dark iron. I'm going to go back to the house and then we'll put together a wrath lamp. Okay, so once you have your dark iron blocks, uh, you can place them in any crafting grid and get four dark iron out of them, which is generally the amount you need for most of the craftable items. Um, if you place it in a crafting grid with the wrath igniter and some silver, uh, you can get one of these wrath lamps out of it. Um, and what I was going to do, or what I suggested doing in the last episode, was placing that over here, which is still a practical suggestion. Um, so I'm just going to find the center of this and place that guy there. And uh, now it's quite a bit brighter in here. Uh, the other thing that we can do that we probably need to for the purposes of the quarry is uh, craft a extra dimensional barrel upgrade, which I also did in the other series. Um, which you need a barrel, some blaze rods, leather, uh, ender pearls. I don't know that I have all that stuff. I have plenty of blaze rods, um, but the ender pearls are probably going to be a pinch point. Um, so once I get that stuff together, namely the ender pearl, uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so fortunately last night we were able to obtain some ender pearls, um, so I can throw those in the crafting did, grid and get uh, my barrel upgrades. Um, I do have quite a bit more materials to make other things, but uh, until we get a steady source of ender pearls, we can't really do much with that. Um, I did want to grab some lava, and I forgot to do that. Uh, so let's come over here. I need to clear some inventory space. Okay, so um, let's grab some lava to refuel the quarry. And then bring our barrel upgrades over here. Um, you might be able to see I got the pumpkins um, that I wanted to get. So one of these is going to go here. And I'm just shift and right clicking the barrel to place the upgrade on it. And then um, that barrel will be able to hold 1,024 stacks instead of just the 64. Um, so I'll just put some more lava in these guys. And it burns through this lava very quickly, so... Um, it's a fairly resource-intensive process to get the quarry going, but I have gotten quite a bit of ores out of it, um, so I'm pretty happy with it in that regard. Um, no diamonds or anything yet, um, but you can see, maybe, I might have to turn the brightness up on this, um, but I placed the pumpkins in the lower level, and this is where we are now. And now I'm drowning. Um, so we have a little ways to go, but uh, we're almost at bedrock. Um, so at, at the point where we hit bedrock, I'm probably going to move the quarry. Um, I still have probably a lot of storage in those barrels um, if I put the barrel upgrades on. Um, so I will probably just reset uh, the the area that it mines over it that way. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not I would have to move it to accomplish that. Um, I think I can just move the relay and this pipe and um, it, I should be able to make it go that way. So, uh, aside from that, um, I don't really have any updates at this stage and um, that should do it for this episode and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.